Welcome to our presentation on the Parker O-Ring Handbook. Originally released in 1957, the Parker O-Ring Handbook is a revolutionary tool used by design engineers everywhere. Over the years, the handbook has been revised and released several times to maintain Parker's position as leader of the O-Ring industry. Nearly 300 pages in length, it is packed with answers to every O-Ring question you didn't know you had. This video will provide an overview of the handbook's 11 chapters, highlighting the most popular sections and pointing out key areas to familiarize yourself with. To ensure the best learning experience, please have the handbook available to reference and take notes. If you do not have a hard copy, you can download a digital copy from our website at www.parker.com forward slash ORD 5700. Key areas we will focus on are an introduction to O-rings, basic O-ring elastomers, O-ring applications, static O-ring sealing, dynamic sealing, and backup rings. We'll also cover the fluid compatibility chart, specifications, sizes, the appendix, and the index. Once you have completed this video, you'll be able to skillfully use the handbook finding answers related to basic O-ring use, material selection, and O-ring applications. You will know where to find important information, like groove design for static and dynamic applications, as well as appropriate use for backup rings. You will also have exposure to our handy fluid compatibility guide. Learn where to look for O-ring specifications, recognize O-ring sizing options, and finally, learn how to utilize the appendix for information pertaining to failure modes, inspection criteria, glossary, and tooling dimensions for standard sizes in addition to the index. We recommend you pause the video as needed to reference important topic areas and charts that will be useful to your personal use as you follow along in your copy of the Parker O-Ring Handbook. Chapter 1 starts with the most basic of all questions. What is an O-ring? If you're unfamiliar with O-rings, you'll find a useful explanation on what an O-ring is and why you should choose an O-ring over other types of seals. O-ring uses are described as static, reciprocating, oscillating, and even less common uses such as pneumatic and vacuum designs. So what is an O-ring? An O-ring is a type of seal that is round with a circular cross-section. O-rings seal over a wide range of pressures, temperatures, and tolerances. They require very little room and are lightweight. Oftentimes, an O-ring can be reused. When failure occurs, it is normally a gradual failure and easily identified. Best of all, O-rings are a very cost-effective sealing option. Chapter 1 of the handbook provides a very good foundation of knowledge for basic O-ring applications, characteristics, and terminology. Chapter 2 dives into the most important part of O-ring selection, materials. Parker O-ring, an engineered seals division, offers over 300 rubber material options, which originate from 13 different elastomers. Each elastomer has basic characteristics such as temperature range, chemical resistance, and durability. This chapter discusses what those characteristics are in broad generalities. Additional topics covered in this chapter are ASTM D1418 descriptions, how to select an elastomer family for your application, and rubber shelf life. It also provides descriptions on the laboratory testing used to quantify rubber characteristics such as hardness, tensile strength, and compression set. Chapter 3 begins the details of applications. This is where you'll learn what it means for an O-ring to extrude and how to avoid extrusion. If you're considering an O-ring lubricant, this is where you'll find the advantages and benefits of using lubricant as well as the types Parker offers. Import design concepts are also introduced in Chapter 3, such as stretch, squeeze, and gland fill. Each concept is detailed with corresponding graphs to illustrate these design concepts. It also contains a brief overview of specific applications by market. For example, consider the automotive market. The chapter discusses typical fuel, transmission, coolant, and air conditioning applications. 
There are similar segments on food, beverage, and potable water, aerospace, nuclear, and the energy, oil, and gas markets. This specialty information aids countless companies and engineers in their design process. Chapter 4 discusses groove design for static applications. The most common static design is a radial seal, which has an O-ring on a piston inside a bore. Other static designs detailed in this chapter are a face seal, a crush seal, dovetail and half dovetail, and a boss seal, which is also called a tube fitting. For each static design, there are diagrams detailing the appropriate groove dimensions and surface finish recommendations corresponding to AS568 sized O-rings. Groove and O-ring dimension are provided for optimal O-ring stretch, O-ring squeeze, and gland fill. For the radial design, there are two listings of dimensions. Parker recommends following the industrial static designs on page 4-9 but has included the AS5857 designs as a reference for your convenience. Chapter 5 is dedicated to dynamic sealing, with gland dimension recommendations for the most common motions of reciprocating and rotary movement. While not as common, there are also recommendations for a floating pneumatic piston ring seal gland, which is just for airflow. Chapter 5 discusses many details that are specific to dynamic sealing. These topics include O-ring wear, surface finish, breakout friction, running friction as well as improvement suggestions for each of these challenges. Another topic in Chapter 5 is how to use an O-ring as a drive belt. Chapter 6 is all about backup rings. What is a backup ring? In a radial seal, there will always be a clearance gap between the piston and bore. For certain conditions, the O-ring could extrude into the clearance gap. Oftentimes, placing a backup ring adjacent to the O-ring in the groove will prevent the O-ring from extruding. Referencing back to Chapter 3, Figure 3-2 is an excellent tool for determining if a backup ring is needed. Chapter 6 details the correct placement of the backup ring. Selecting a backup ring as well as the different material options available. Chapter 7 is a fluid compatibility guide that will be very useful in selecting a material for a given application. Over 2,000 fluids, gases, greases, and mediums are listed alphabetically for a quick evaluation on how they will affect a given elastomer family. To better understand the structure of the chart, please turn to page 7-2 in your Parker O-Ring Handbook and follow along. The first column lists the fluid. The top row lists the basic polymer families. A matrix of ratings exists for each combination of fluids and elastomers. The compatibility rating system is one for satisfactory, two for fair, three for doubtful, and four for unsatisfactory. A rating of one is most desirable. However, a rating of 2 or 3 may be fine if the chemical interaction is limited or the application is static. A rating of 4 is usually undesirable. In the event of insufficient data, the rating will be an X. Also contained on each fluid compatibility page is an approximate service temperature range for common elastomer types. In many cases, multiple materials will be acceptable, strictly from a compatibility point of view. However, the expected application temperature range will help narrow the selection to fewer material options. The second column of the compatibility chart contains a recommended Parker compound number for the fluid. This recommendation is independent of temperature, pressure, or any other application detail. It is based only on fluid compatibility. In the case where multiple elastomer families have acceptable compatibility, the materials recommended will be based on the best price and availability. For example, acetone has a rating of 1 in ethylene propylene or perfluoroelastomer. The recommended material is EO540-80. Because an ethylene propylene material is more cost-effective than a perfluoroelastomer, 
Chapter 8 goes into typical specifications relating to O-ring sizes, materials, test fluids, and testing methods. Very common military fluids, also called mil-spec fluids, are listed on page 8-3, along with the recommended Parker material. This chapter details the material specifications often required for military and aerospace customers. Included is a short description of the material requirements and the approved Parker material number. Also, important to note is the section on ASTM D2000 line callouts. The callouts listed on these pages are very common and will most often match up with customer print requirements. For each ASTM D2000 line callout, a Parker material is also recommended. Chapter 8 is also helpful to understand the nomenclature system used to name each Parker material. There are two methodologies. The first is Type 1 numbering, where the first letter corresponds to the polymer code and is followed by a unique four-digit number. The number following the hyphen signifies the Shore A hardness. Type 2 compound numbering is very similar to Type 1. The first letter still indicates the polymer code. In the NA151 example, N is for nitrile, and the second letter indicates an exotic or special property about the material. A three-digit unique number will follow the two letters, and just like Type 1, the number after the hyphen is the Shore A hardness value. A complete listing of the polymer codes and special property descriptions are detailed in Chapter 8. Chapter 9 is all about O-ring size options. The most common is our 2 and 3 series. The triple X indicates a three-digit number that corresponds exactly to the AS568 sizes. AS568 is an aerospace sizing document that has O-ring dimensions and tolerances applied across the industry. The 3 dash series of sizes is designed specifically for tube fitting boss seals. Additionally, Parker has determined a list of commonly used sizes and labeled them with the 5 dash series. The sizing chapter also includes the metric sizes governed by ISO 3601 1 series A and G and JIS B2401 sizes. The appendix is full of invaluable information like failure modes, inspection criteria, a glossary, and tooling dimensions for standard sizes. The failure modes section will be especially helpful for evaluating used O-rings in order to identify the root cause of the premature failure. Each failure mode includes a list of suggestions for improving the application in order to extend O-ring life or eliminate the failure mode. The inspection criteria section includes pictures of allowable anomalies, as well as tolerances for each anomaly type. The glossary is a quick reference tool providing a description of typical O-ring and rubber language. For example, if you need to learn more about O-ring swelling, you can quickly look up swell and find that it means an increased volume of an O-ring caused by fluid immersion. And finally, the last chapter of the handbook is an index. The index includes many of the topics discussed throughout the book. However, it is not an all-inclusive listing. Don't forget to check out our O-Ring e-handbook for use when you're on the go. This abridged version provides dynamic animations for visual learning, interesting excerpts and summarized information that makes finding what you need effortless. It can be viewed by going to www.parker.com forward slash O-Ring handbook. A hard copy of the O-Ring Handbook can be ordered by calling 1-800-C-PARKER or you can download the PDF by visiting www.parker.com forward slash ORD 5700. To stay up on the latest ceiling solutions, follow us at www.blog.parker.com forward slash ceiling dash shielding.